A state that is considered to be among America's most liberal has an issue in one of its small cities. People there are worried about a change in their culture because they are expecting an influx of refugees. Bernie Sanders is from that very same state. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment, but I do want to remind you. Our friend Dr. Eric F. Jones uh, was in studio with us a few weeks ago when he said he had some great response from people. He was here talking about his holistic approach to wellness. And a lot of people today are looking for more traditional remedies, uh, trying to stay away from necessarily a lot of prescription drugs and the like. He has been practicing since 1993 with master's and doctoral degrees in marriage and family therapy. And we know in this day and age, we really need a lot of that. Dr. Eric F. Jones uses methods of alternative healing, such as naturopathy, medicinal herbs, nutrition, sound waves, intellectual cognitive self-regulation, and naprathy to help remedy and manage mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual challenges. He's currently accepting new patients. He has evening and Saturday appointments available. Telephone number 208-731-7178, and you can find him now on Facebook. Eric F. Jones, Ph.D., Mental Health and Wellness Therapist. And I like to remind people he spells Eric with a C. 925, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. It's 64. Came across this story this morning, and I thought, why am I not surprised? And yet, this is coming out of Vermont, which is considered to be one of the bluest states in America, even though it's known as the Green Mountain State. I'm, for full disclosure, a former resident of that state, although I lived in Bristol, Vermont, and briefly in Montpelier. Uh, Bristol was perhaps the most Republican town in the state, which I know isn't saying much. Uh, This story comes out of Rutland, Vermont, though, which I visited in the past. About 20 years ago, I went to Rutland. I was uh, visiting friends in Albany, which isn't far from there, and we drove up to Rutland for breakfast and uh, got to see quite a bit of southern Vermont. A writer at Bloomberg by the name of Tim Jones says, In Rutland, Independence Day was marked by fireworks, picnics, and bitter debate over whether to resist the arrival this fall of 100 Syrian refugees or to welcome the asylum seekers to America. Now, I don't think Rutland has changed much. I visited there, as I say, about 20 years ago, and they had a population maybe, maybe of 10,000 people. Got to remember, it's a small state. The state capital of, of, of Montpelier only has about 11,000. Rutland is about the same size. It's not a big community. So you're talking 100 newcomers very quickly could change the, uh, the, the, the pattern of that culture. Mayor Christopher Loris announced the resettlement in April to the surprise and puzzlement of many residents. It was presented as a fait accompli, in other words, a done deal, in a celebratory press conference that it provoked a backlash. Many members of the public would like a vote on whether to allow the Syrians in. And again, we don't get these things because this program comes down from on high and it trickles down and and local folks don't get any, as we know from our own experience, any say in the matter. And the mayor said in an interview, that's not going to happen. We don't get to vote who our neighbors are. That's objectionable and offensive. So once again, you have one of these elitist politicians who is saying, if you don't agree with it, you're offensive, you're a bigot, you're a racist, therefore... Your, your views, they simply don't count because you don't come to all of the swank parties that I go to. You can't possibly be as good a human being as I am, and therefore it is my job to ensure that we don't let your opinion or allow your opinion to have any impact on our decisions. But there's a fellow who's opposed to this. His name is Cook, and he says, to bring in 100 Syrian refugees is absolute lunacy. They could be 100 people from Quebec, and we'd still have to make accommodations for them, and it would fall to Rutland City taxpayers. If you didn't know, Rutland's economic vital signs are generally weak or lagging the rest of the state. 18% of the population lives in poverty. For you liberals out there, that's roughly one in five. Compared with just 12% statewide, the town's population has dropped almost a quarter since 1970. So, with people there already fighting for jobs and many of them already struggling to make ends meet and likely on public assistance, the local government would like to bring in 100 more. We have a telephone caller with us. You're on the air with Bill Colley at 928. Hi. You know, uh, there's, there's communities that have voted to keep child molesters out of their communities and, and hooray for them. However, that's because of the danger they pose. What's the difference? The difference is, are you implying there's no danger here? No, 
I'm, I'm, there is danger. What I'm saying is, is it's dangerous to have the child molesters in your community, so people vote to keep them out. Right. They are, and so why can't you vote to keep other dangers out of your community? Right, and even if, the, even if there's no surface-level danger here, the government is, in fact, uh, James Comey, who's been in the news on another matter over the last 24 hours, has testified already that we can't screen these people the way the government claims we're screening them. It's simply we can't do it because they don't have any paperwork behind them. We don't know who they are. And uh, thank you for the call, and that's a great point to be made. Even though they're not necessarily coming here with daggers clenched between their teeth already pledging to kill all of us, we don't know how many of them are parts of sleeper cells. And because of that, they're just waiting for that opportunity. One day there's a signal that comes from ISIS, and the next day there's 25 people dead in the local cafe. 930, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 65. Got more on this subject coming up in just a moment. Uh, subject, obviously, here that in places like Twin Falls simply is not going to go away no matter how much people try to bury their heads in the sand. Just looking in my email this morning, my email address in case you are looking to drop me a line, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. I have an email from RFD TV telling me about the launch of a new show. I have that on my direct TV package, and I got to tell you, I really enjoy it. If you if you haven't seen it yet, uh, well, they, they have a lot of great classic country music shows. But if uh, if you're living in a place like uh, southern Idaho where there's an agricultural-dependent economy, this is a network that's geared toward you. So I'm reading through the email, and I think we need to get somebody from the network on as a guest on the show one of these days. 934, Bill Colley with you this morning. Top story is the show on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com at 66. We were talking about Rutland, Vermont, and its opposition to the resettlement of 100 Syrian refugees. Now, if you read the statistics on the number, the thousands that have already come to the shores this year, and President Obama still says we're going to bring about another 4,000, I think we're at 6,000 for the year, another 4,000 from Syria just this, this year alone, and then we're going to bump this up in coming years, his plan. Well, he won't be there, but if it's Hillary, the plan will go through. So we'll be looking at upwards of 100,000, maybe 200,000 people coming from that part of the world. And as we've been arguing for a very long time, we don't know who they all are. 9.35 now, and it, it, it makes good sense to me to put a moratorium on this, as Donald Trump has called for, and as Governor Otter has called for, until we figure out what the heck is going on. In fact, Idaho is no longer, I read this the other day, and it was to my surprise, Idaho is no longer participating. So the federal government is doing an end around the state and is using private contractors to do all of the resettlement here. This is from the Daily Caller today. Left-wing German politician lied to police about being raped to save migrants from racism. I tell you, folks, every day that liberalism, I'll borrow that Michael Savage phrase, is a mental disease. And I tell you every day that liberals are completely whacked. So now you have a liberal politician in Germany who was raped by a gang of men, gang raped, if you will, by a group of Muslim refugees or migrants and refused to tell police right away exactly what happened. Left-wing German politician, Celine Gorin, has just admitted she lied to police and said she wasn't raped to prevent the spread of racism against migrants. Immediately after the attack, she ran to the police to inform them she had been raped, but refused to divulge the ethnic identity of her attackers because of how badly migrants suffered in the aftermath of the mass sexual assaults in Cologne, Germany, on New Year's Eve, where countless hundreds of migrants Swarm German women and abuse them. Yeah, gosh, but that would never happen in America. Instead, she claimed a group of mixed foreigners and locals attacked her, saying they spoke German. But in reality, the men were speaking either Kurdish or Farsi. Farsi being a Persian-Iranian language, Kurdish being a language in northern Iraq, parts of Turkey, and parts of Syria. But just 12 hours after she was first assaulted, she went back to the police and came clean, spilling all the details about the men who raped her. According to Garen, a friend persuaded her to tell the full truth. She now believes people should never hide the truth for the purpose of political expediency. 
So here you have some whacked out liberal who was gang raped by a group of Muslim immigrants. And she went to police and said, ah, uh, you know, some of them may have been German. Yeah, yeah, they were, uh, yeah, that's a ticket. They were speaking German. She lied about her own attack because she was worried that if, if, if she told the truth, that people would say, you know, perhaps a great many of these Muslim migrants are rapists and criminals. No. What, what a shocker. 938, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I'm glad she eventually decided 24 hours later to have an epiphany and come and tell the truth. But this just goes to show you liberals are okay with crimes being committed against you. And if you complain, you're just a bigot and a racist. But if a, if a liberal themselves are victimized, they have to struggle with it for a while, but eventually they find their own conscience and they have to come forward and tell the truth. But it's got to be a real eye-opener. She, she wanted to protect her attackers because, even though she reported her attackers, because she was afraid it might give that impression that they were bad people. Or that amongst them there are bad people. Is that a better way to put that? Does it sound at all like what we deal with on the local level? Because a great many of these people who champion this program, they don't live anywhere near where these people are, so they're not harmed by it. It's like people with illegal immigrants who think that it's just fine. Well, the people behind gates who tell you we need more of it, we can't build a wall, but they live behind a gate in their neighborhood or at their home. They tell you it's a great thing because they don't live next door to 15 of these people who are sharing hot racks and dumping empty beer cans all over the neighborhood. That actually happened to a friend of mine. She bought a home in this beautiful rural community, left a big city to get away from the crime, and a year later, Somebody came in and sold the house next door to someone who decided to rent it out to a group of illegal aliens who sleep there in shifts. She eventually had to put up her own fence because she was sick and tired of looking at them all urinating in the backyard. Apparently, all 25 of them couldn't get into the toilet at once. And, and yet, she was accused when she complained about it of being racist. The people, though, in government who said she was racist didn't live next door. 940, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Oh, got this as well. Uh, also, uh, coming out of Act for America. And by the way, Brigitte Gabriel, founder of that group, is going to be speaking here in one month. Uh, polling data shows U.S. Muslims in increasing numbers favor Sharia law in the United States. Oh, well.